Good morning, boys and girls in calculus land. So we're going to talk about uh, the preparation for the worksheet. Uh, 1.5, inverse functions. Now listen to this if you can. Find a domain on which f is 1 to 1 and a formula for the inverse of f restricted to this domain. What? Okay. So let me kind of give you an idea what they're talking about. First of all, the domain on which f is 1 to 1 just means the domain on which it is a function. So many of our functions that will be given, you might have something like, uh, you know, 1 over x. Well, that's a pretty good function except when x is equal to 0. So you would say x cannot equal, to ze uh, cannot equal 0. Um, think about the vertical line test. If you had, you know, uh, an equation that gave you something like this, this would not be, you know, one-to-one -one because it fails the vertical line test. But if you had something that, you know, was, was good for a while, and then it went here like that, and then it went back, you might be able to say, well, you know, everywhere outside of this range, we still have a nice one-to-one -one thing. Okay, now the inverse is just uh, find the inverse and we'll go over that in a minute. You probably have done that before. Just not sure if you've done the one-to-one -one stuff. Okay, so the first example is f of x equals one over seven x minus three. So I'm gonna make that say the bottom can't be zero. So the bottom cannot be, or sorry, x cannot equal three-sevenths. Uh, other than that, there's no problems with this relatively simple function. <clears throat> so the domain is all real numbers except for three sevenths. Then, in order to find the, um, we're going to find the f uh, inverse, the inverse function of x. I mean, of f of x. And so, I don't know what you guys were ever taught, but I was taught. You know, if this is like y equals 1 over 7x minus 3, I switch the x and the y and then solve for y again, uh, uh, which I get round to here. y equals 1 minus 3x over 7x. And um, so the, uh, the inverse function is 1 minus 3x over 7x, and x can't equal 0 because, of the, uh, because that would make the bottom 0. Okay? So look, all I did here, I mean, I stuck a one under it. I cross, I, well, I didn't cross multiply, but I exchanged those two. And then I uh, added three. And as you can see, I added three, added three, added three, added three. That's better. I added three, and then we have uh you know then i got a common denominator i got it all into one fraction and then i divided by seven there we go no problem okay there we go cut off a little bit in the corner <sighs> all right let me move up now then the next part is to evaluate without using a calculator all right, so the first part is easy. You've got like an example of the tangent, uh, the inverse tangent of radical three. You think, all right, I need a, a right triangle with radical three and it's gonna include, you know, 30, 60, 90. As you recall, one, two, radical three. So uh, where, which one of these acute angles has a tangent of radical 3. Well, it's this one up here because it's radical 3 over 1, not 1 over radical 3, which it would be for this angle. That's why it's here, which is pi over 3 because it's 60. All right, if they give you one like this, which there is one like this, where it, it could be inverse tangent and tangent or inverse cosine and cosine or whatever, but it's the same thing. They cancel each other out. You just get pi over 3. Please note, if the angle here was more than 2 pi, you would subtract 2 pi from that to get it back into the world of uh, between 0 and 2 pi. Now this one here is our last example, <clears throat> and I have to show you how to do this one. 
This is the cosine of the inverse sine of two-thirds. So right now I'm just going to think about the inverse sine of two-thirds. All right, let's make a right triangle. If I think about this, maybe to be two and this to be three, and if we're talking about sine, I think we'd be talking about this angle. But uh, we're going to need to know this side in order to find the cosine eventually, because we're going to take the cosine of this over this. All right, so if I just use my favorite dummy variable of p, then I have uh, p squared plus 2 squared equals 3 squared p squared uh, plus 4 equals 9, and p squared equals 5, and p equals the square root of 5. So this becomes the square root of 5 here. So this angle is the one that has the sine of 2 over 3 opposite over hypotenuse. What is the cosine of that angle? adjacent over hypotenuse. So the answer is radical 5 over 3. And that, boys and girls, is how it's done. Whoops, I'm sorry that I didn't give you all you could see on that. Man, I need to check that more often, just like I am now the sound. Sorry. Okay. So I think you should be good to go. And uh, not too hard of a worksheet. We will see you on the next side.